technically you still didn't see them. Yeah. Okay. Well. So he spent Anyways. all his time practicing, and he started to open with that. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was terrible. Okay. So this is it, the terrain manipulation stream. We are mm. going to talk about anything and everything terrain manipulation, multi-level block clusters. Um, Which I they have, have, they have no idea what that means. Yes. I have to my right uh, the fabulous who. What is your name? Uh, Sim Guru Ghost, also known as Greg. Yes. Greg is sort of the mastermind behind all of the terrain manipulation stuff. He's mm. had a lot of help with our lovely client engineering team. They've put and the art team. Of, and the art team. They've put a ton of work into this, and we're super excited to finally get to show you all these crazy tools, and we can't wait to release it mm. and have you guys play with it. So that's it. We're walking away. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so we're going to start off uh, terrain manipulation. So let's fly. I hope so. Let's fly. Yeah. Let's, uh, can, they let's actually, show can they actually see the lot? Can they, can they see the game? I don't they, think they so. They can see the lot. They are now okay. set. Okay, great. Don't worry about you're, it. You're, you're good. So right. now, <laughs> what we're going to do is we sh we'll show you... This this lovely new icon there in the mm -hmm. house. It has a cute little shovel. Oh yeah, this one. Yeah, our uh, our Lonnie, one of our artists, uh, created this nice little shovel mm. with, uh, with, to denote now terrain paint is called what terrain tools. Uh, yeah, terrain tools. Yeah, our set of all the tools that we can do. So painting terrain and sculpting terrain, moving terrain around. Those are our terrain tools. Yep. And then actually moving the terrain, we're calling that terrain manipulation. Very important. I think any programmer can tell you that naming things is actually. One of the hardest parts of programming. Yes. Like Steve's laughing over there. He knows. He knows. <laughs> well, I've had I've had entire code reviews blocked because Dan is like, no, like that name, like it's too long, or like it's not descriptive enough. Or like, you know, we actually like this name means something else. Yeah. Like it's yeah. okay. They don't care yeah. about how yeah, we yeah, code yeah, it. Sorry, they sorry. just care about making <laughs> it. It's insight. Yeah. So uh, we're gonna quickly do high level and we will peel back the the terrain like mm -hmm. like layers. Like and we'll layers. go deeper and deeper and deeper and sort of mm -hmm. show you how crazy you can go with terrain manipula manipulation. Right. So we're gonna start off on the top level. We're gonna just give you a quick brief overview of the new tools we have. The top level, which actually happens to be around the middle section. Sure. So, uh, rays yes. is our first tool. Yes. This it allows you to hopefully not lower terrain because that'd be very confusing. No, it allows you to bring the terrain. I like to like this engineering term like up. Up. Yeah. That's very <laughs> sophisticated. Yeah. The okay. y the y axis moves in that direction. Great. And then and then we of have... course no no up sculpting tool will be complete without its uh, polar opposite. You know, it's like kind of like the yen part of programming. Like. Yeah. You know. so, so we have lowered right to the to the right of it. Yeah. yeah. The anti up. Yeah. yeah, so click the lower tool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. There you go, Greg. Well, I all did. Right. I actually did a little bit of lowering with the other one, but all yeah. right. So you can also lower with the actual lower tool. Yep, perfect. Mm -hmm. And then to the right of that, we have smooth. Yeah. Which is a, a very popular tool. I use this all the time mm -hmm. to make terrain actually routable. Yeah. It, also, like if you like to make terrain actually look good, I hear that artists really like smoothing stuff out. Like, I don't know, personally, I was just like, up and down, that's all you need, like, for terrain, no. right? And they're like, no, like, it needs to look good and stuff, and, like, smoothness. And I'm like, so I, I get that to Pavel. Pavel yeah. is actually the guy who does smooth stuff. Our, like, our, I don't care about smooth. Like, yeah. Our smooth tool, I think, is actually a lot better mm -hmm. than any sort of previous Sims game. Mm -hmm. It feels really great. Um, so, and something you might notice here is the more that I'm smoothing the lot, the more the grid is going away. We'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there. I just wanted to point it out so people can think, like, why is that there? Why aren't they mentioning it? It's okay. Yeah. So uh, let's go ahead and talk about some of our new options here. So you can change mm -hmm. the size of your brush in, yeah. the, in the UI down here. So you can change the size. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a softness slider and a speed slider, right? Mm -hmm. So what so do those do? So if I do? make this really big and make the brush really hard and make the uh, speed really high, you see I just basically create a whole lot of smooth because I was using a smooth tool. Yeah, don't, don't <laughs> I, smooth I really smooth it really <laughs> fast, just like top level, like yeah. average. Or I can make this giant pillar. There you go. Um, and this is because it, it came up fast because, you know, the my speed. speed. Yeah, so I can bring the speed down and very slowly create a pillar. Yep. So this is actually, <laughs> the, the speed tool is super powerful when you're trying to fine tune specific terrain. So like when you're yeah. trying to... Well, also a smoothing, like I, I like to use a very soft brush, very large, very low speed. Yep. And you can kind of like, so smooth you almost don't even know it's doing anything. Yeah, so we'll, like, we'll show off a lot of the fine detail stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but you can see it's actually doing something because this awesome visualizer that <laughs> I insisted we have. It's okay. Well, yeah. you're jumping way ahead. Yeah, yeah, Greg yeah. is super excited right now to show off all the stuff. We're going to try to step through it and show you step by step. I can't remember the actual plan we did. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. So go ahead and flatten the entire lot, which is that button on the yeah. right in the UI. It's slightly different. And you can different. tell it's button because it's blue, as buttons usually are. Yep. Like sometimes people do bevels, but no, we went with blue. Yeah. So if you click that, so this flattens the entire lot. Yeah. And you can undo that one. That's why we didn't do a confirmation dialog. Yes. 
So, uh, flatten the lot. Yeah, or I can flatten little parts of the lot. You're jumping ahead. Yeah. I'm jumping, <laughs> you're jumping way ahead. Right flatten the lot, please. Yeah. All right, okay. great. You have a flat? There we go. Uh-huh. Uh, so now, basically, let's go ahead and show him what this awesome topography line thing is. So, it's mm -hmm. very useful for showing various things. So, not only uh, terrain height, but some other stuff. So, do you mm -hmm. want to go into a little detail of why you created this? What was the point of it? <laughs> so, actually, the most important part of the topology visualizer for me is this part of the grid. Like, your eyes might be, oh, um, your eyes might be drawn to the part where you see the lines. But this is actually, like, so Sims 3, I have actually a little a traumatic story. <laughs> um, when I first joined the team in 2010, they gave me a copy of The Sims 3, and, like, one of the first things I did, entered a lot, entered build mode, and tried to place a mailbox down. And I couldn't. And I, I was trying to place it in a section of the lot that looked nice and flat, but it kept telling me this lot isn't flat. Yep. And that was, was very traumatic for me. So I decided to never again, like, if we ever do more terrain sculpting, like, I want to know exactly which parts are flat. Yeah. And if I want to make something flat, I want to be able to, like, you know, see that it actually is flat. So the importance of this is, as you can see, this entire area, like, if you're just trying to eyeball it, that might look flat to you, but it's not. And some of our objects, like especially, should I bring up the rocket ship? Yeah, grab the rocket, because I know the, the rocket is a rather large footprint. Mm -hmm. So like some of these objects require a flat surface just to look good, because otherwise it'll kind of like float and stuff. Yeah. Um, so if you try to place an object anywhere around here, you'll just see like, you know, it has to be on flat terrain. Um, but in this area over here where I have the grid, and you know it's like completely flat, so if you, you know that you can G. place. Uh, this is actually, you'll only oh, that's see, right. yeah. yeah. So the topology visualizer replaces the grid if you're in terrain sculpting mode, which is why it went away before. Yeah. So here you can use G to toggle the grid on and off, or if I just go ahead and go back place to that. terrain. Yeah. If I go back to our terrain tools, now you can see um, I can toggle this on and off to get a look of what the lot's actually going to look like when I'm sculpting. And you can sculpt like this too if this is your preferred way. Mm -hmm. But my personal recommendation is at least once before you finish, like before you're about to use your lot, switch to this mode. And if there's anything that you thought was flat, make it flat because trust me it's, it's so much better if you actually just can know that like there are parts of your lot where it's completely flat and you can put things there and you don't have to worry about object placement rules like um, well you still have to worry about object placement rules yeah. but not like the the terrain yeah you, you, don't, you basically don't have to fight things because you know for sure that where you're trying to place that object is absolutely flat mm -hmm. now as far as going back to this visualizer though mm -hmm. we do have these lines you might notice so what the, the other reason why greg is on a tool right now we we quickly brushed over but we have mm -hmm. two new tools mm -hmm. uh we have flatten mm -hmm. and then flatten to height so greg is on the flatten tool yeah. so what is what is the topology lines help with this so the topology lines are actually more important for um block and stair placement and making sure that your lot aligns to like, kind of like the grid can stick to areas where um, high level increments of um, granularity. Yeah, so basically, <laughs> for, for less engineer speak, uh, <laughs> when, when you're trying to make a lot or a, a mound a certain height, mm -hmm. this thing will snap to those topology lines. Right. Um, so you're not trying to fight it in between those little things. To right. Get well, and also cuts. the other important thing about this is like these are the elevations at which you can place block floors, at which stairs can be attached to train, that kind of we'll thing. But we'll get there. Yep. <laughs> um, and the flying tool automatically um, snaps to those things. And you don't even need to know about this, you don't need to care about it. But you can know that that exists, and it's kind of cool. Yep. Um, so really quick, let's go ahead and make a, a couple, just to sort of set up for our next part. Yeah. Let's make a couple of mounts. Go ahead and delete your, your rocket ship, because we don't, we don't care about that. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead and make a couple plateaus here to, mm -hmm. to show varying elevation. Right. And so And this is where the, the fly and the height tool comes in handy. So cool. actually, um, I want to make a nice big crevice right in the middle here, just because. Perfect. That is a very big crevice. It is a very big crevice. Actually, maybe it's a little bit too big. Go ahead and make that a little bit. Yeah. All right, I'm happy now. Perfect. All right, so the reason I find the height tool, like this is actually something where if I wanted to make something where I have two parts, this looks nothing like the lot we practiced on. It's okay. <laughs> Greg, Greg jumped really far ahead. We're going to try to come back. Yeah, we'll, we'll fix it. Yeah. So if I want to make two different heights that are this, like two different parts of the lot that are the same height, yeah. I can use flatten the height to stick that flatten tool to a, a predefined height. Mm -hmm. So I can say like, okay, I want to flatten this side. And you notice nice... when you're clicking those brackets, so we have the UI tool to adjust it, but if you're using the bracket hotkeys, mm -hmm. it'll jump to those topography lines. Yeah. So I can just go up and down by increments and decide where I want my height to be. Yep. Um, so let's just say I want to make one little plateau right here. I want a smaller brush. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, there you go. Yeah. One little plateau right around here. And it's good. I want to have one the exact same height over here. Yeah, so now you have basically a canyon that you've made. Yeah, and I know Virginia. that these are the same height because I just flattened them there. Yep. Um, and of course, you can always, you can use this tool if you want to. Like, oh, I want to flatten to this height right there. So you can grab this and then move it out. And as long as you're doing one drag operation, everything's going to be the same height. Yep. So you can just like jump into this pit and you know that's still the same height. But it's a little bit more destructive. So, so go ahead and build another, actually go back. Uh, that yeah. one? There you go. Go ahead and build a, a higher plateau on this larger land mass to your right. Sure. So the way I actually prefer making plateaus is just raise the height. Yep. Uh, less strong. A lot less strong. <laughs> raise the height. Pick a height. Oh, not like that. Um, pick a height that I like. So it's like, all right, uh, I want about there. Yep. And I just flatten to that. Perfect. So go ahead and drag it, make it large so we can play with blocks and stuff and really show off that. Mm -hmm. How, how we're, we're going to get into a little more Make detail on how... Stuff. That's producer speak. Perfect. <laughs> so now we're going to get into how blocks function with terrain. Right. Um, so let's go ahead and build two blocks next to each other. Sure. So we're going to build... Use the draw, the draw tool. Right. Just to sort of show off this a little better. So we're going to build two blocks. Mm -hmm. So you may have saw this. Uh, I kind of alluded to this in the uh, last Maxis Monthly but we have a new way of adjusting foundations. Mm. So before you would have to click the foundation on your, your house, but now we've removed the slider there. This is only to apply foundations. Mm. So if you go back to your block tool, yeah, there you go, or yeah, perfect. So now if you click on a block, mm -hmm. you can grab it, the little this widget little, in the center. It's actually called a gizmo, it's a giz technical term. A gizmo. Yeah. Great. And then you can go ahead and raise the foundation. Yeah. So you can just pick it up, raise it to whatever height you want. So not only can you raise foundation directly on a block, mm -hmm. we actually allow you to raise foundation higher than you otherwise would have with the foundation slider. So now you can actually raise foundation all the way up there, mm -hmm. which coincidentally is the highest you can manipulate terrain. Mm -hmm. So Well, not, not coincidentally at all, at all actually. Yes. That's actually intentionally, very intentional. Intentionally. <laughs> the opposite of coincidentally. Yeah. So, okay. So now we have two blocks mm -hmm. at different heights. Artisanally. Yes. All right, so. so now go ahead and build a third block off to the side a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, draw, yeah, perfect. There you, go. you like that draw tool so much. I do. Draw tool is great. No, no. They're this, excited about the foundation. Yeah, yes. I'm glad. This this is the best tool. Ultra draw. Great. Yeah. All right. <laughs> You're straying, Greg. You're straying. I know, but it's so fun. I so, made that one too. So the one thing <laughs> we really wanted to highlight with this mm -hmm. was when you're trying to make blocks match the same height, while, while we were developing, we actually found out it was super difficult to make blocks match. Mm -hmm. So Greg went ahead and added an extra little visualizer here. So while mm -hmm. Greg's maneuvering the height, you'll notice the blocks are highlighting the left and right. right. So this will say... It'll show you the blocks that are the same height as that one. So these are blocks that are compatible. We call yep. them same cluster. Well, technically they're not the same cluster yet. So they're compatible you, clusters you, at least. If you release... Yeah. So now we have a block... Both of those blocks are matching heights. Mm -hmm. So now we have the option. We can drag that block into the other one. And connect them. And they'll connect seamlessly. Now these blocks are considered one cluster. So yeah. if you raise and lower them. So they move together now. They'll move together. And I can make them the same height as the previous one. Yep. And now we're going to make another room off to the side. Yeah, exactly. So uh, we actually sort of built a large game plan here. So if you see me looking at the monitor, I'm trying to make sure we stay on track because there's just way too much stuff. It's it's it's, <laughs> Ro it's Romeo's job to keep us on track and my job to talk about to everything. Divert, <laughs> to divert our Exactly. Our it's like the yin and yang once again. It's like mm -hmm. the up and the anti up. <laughs> yes. Uh, so now uh, Greg just built a three stack of blocks here. Mm -hmm. And notice when he grabs it, he can move that entire stack up and down. I think he quickly showed this. Yeah. So the entire stack will move together. Uh, so now go ahead and adjust that so they're slightly off from the, the left cluster there. And so they are. Or would you like them separate, differently slightly off? No, 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 you're good. So now try to connect those two block clusters and angle the camera a little bit so you can see. So yeah. see how those foundations are actually different heights? Yeah. If you try to drag it, what happens? You get, yeah, you get a little bit of sadness. Yep. Now, so the big focus on this tool was we wanted to make sure that you could build houses at different elevations on your terrain, um, but we haven't yet got to the point where you can actually connect walls yeah. at different heights. So, lots uh, of technical reasons why. So, again, this is an iterative Hashtag step. Hey, this is an iterative step towards true split level. Uh, mm -hmm. That's something we uh, would love to add in the future. Currently, we're not we're not supporting it mm -hmm. but this is just again one step closer and we want to give you guys tools as soon as possible so mm -hmm. this is what we have right now uh so now go ahead and show off if you drag the you gotta drag the block mm -hmm. a little higher 
Right. Well, I just I'm just showing off here that it's not only the same level that can't connect, yeah. but the level above as well. Um, and that's just because we have one surface here, which is level one, a different surface here, which is level one. If I had both of these on top of each other, then I have two level one surfaces at different heights. Like yep. lots of technical reasons. Um, the important thing is that we highlight this other block. So you see those little red lines around the other one? This tells you like the reason you couldn't move this block is because there's this other one that has its own yep. uh, block cluster rules. But we did give you a little concession. Um, we do know that it's kind of cool to have blocks different heights over other blocks. So this, there's no technical technical reason why we shouldn't allow this. It's just kind of risky. But we That's decided good. to push for it anyway. That's good. <laughs> and, um, you can do that. Um, and I can just go ahead and move this up and down. So you can lower it a little bit and show that at some point you'll reach a a point of incompatibility. Yeah. And that's just um, because sims need to be able to route here. So yeah. if I if I try to bring this too close, then bad things would happen. So and one last thing tells you right there. One last thing we want to talk about um, with multi-level block uh, separate from terrain is the wall tool. So mm. if you highlight the wall tool, so blocks still exist on the same level. So yeah. all of these blocks are level one right now. Um, so if Greg highlights the wall tool, mm. you'll see the blocks highlight that are going to change. So yeah. if he, if These he changes, are all on the same level. If he yeah. changes the wall height here, yeah, you'll see all those blocks lower, and raise. Yeah. Cool. That's the thing. Yes. Yeah, so now, into oh, lot is so that, messed up. <laughs> now, now that we've we've sort of covered why we've built multi-level block or mm -hmm. what it is, this is this is the crux behind it. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to make sure that when a player builds a block on a manipulated piece of terrain, mm -hmm. that block is going to exist on the level that they expect. So go ahead and delete all of your, actually yeah. no, let's keep them for now. Mm -hmm. So Greg is setting this up a little bit more to, yeah. to demonstrate some things here. Trying to make this just a little bit better for me to be able to show off some yeah. stuff. Perfect. You want something a little bigger? Of course I do. There you go. Perfect. Yes. Okay, so now go back to our block tool. So. Um, we're going to start off by building a block on terrain at different heights. Right. So when you plop it, this is actually the, the prime motivator of um, this other tool that we added, the multi-block cluster stuff. Do you because want me to go in really quick on why? Like, so what? when we first developed this, mm -hmm. we didn't have multi-level block clusters. Yeah. And what happens is when you go to place a block, mm -hmm. the block would just cut directly through terrain. In I'm fact, like, I, can show you, I can show you what it would do because we have this other tool called Move House. And you can still move an entire house together, and it doesn't change the block's height. So if I use this move house tool, move it over here, you'd get that. So this is, and this is intentional because just like we want to, when you when you're moving a house, we want the entire house to stay the same height because you're moving the house around. Sure. Um, and of course, you can always go and grab this house, and move it up again to fit your new location. Um, Let's go ahead and go. go yeah, back go back, go back. Okay. Um, yeah. So we didn't want, we didn't like the fact that the how, like the block would always move into the terrain, and then you'd have to adjust the foundation height on your lot. And then if you tried to make one like one room be at the top of the terrain, then the other room would have also like a room that's in a valley or something would also go up. Yeah. So, um, so let's go ahead and draw two yeah. sort of rectangular blocks: one uh, spanning from the top down, and then one cutting into the terrain, just yeah. to demonstrate this. So, um, the height of the block will be based on the location, the height of your cursor gizmo when you first start the drag. So if I start a drag up here at the top of this um, plateau. I can drag it off the side, and you can see that the block is still floating right over that gap there. Um, and you have a nice little foundation over the part that is floating and um, not a foundational part that isn't. Yep. And I can do the same thing over here. Yeah, so this block is going to cut in. Mm -hmm. so um, and once again, these foundations are always going to show up on every block that's on level zero. So if I have another block over here, um, this is level one. Now this one isn't going to get a foundation. So for some reason, you wanted to make a floaty block. You could always do something like this. Yep. Um, advanced. Yes. We're getting advanced. we're getting too advanced there. That wasn't even in well, our advanced well, section. That's though. right. We'll get there. All we'll right. get there. Uh, so go ahead and go grab the terrain tool really quick. Uh -huh. So the one thing we've added is every single block on level one always has foundation now. So mm -hmm. if Greg manipulates the foundation, the terrain a little bit under this first uh, block, yes. he'll actually expose foundation. Mm -hmm. So you can see here that the foundation's created. Right. This is so we don't have gaps. And one thing that's nice here is if I grab this block, move it up and down, you can see there's part of this snap preview outline. That's that's an official technical term. Yeah, preview outline. Yeah, snap preview outline. Um, if there's that section, that second line set that's going from the base of the block down, 
that's showing you where the foundation is going to connect to the terrain. So if I wanted to have a block where like this edge right over here is just over the terrain, I can line that up the way I want, drop it right there, and now I know like the foundation is going to end right there. Yep. Or I can drop the whole thing down, and now this is just embedded in terrain, and Perfect. you see that there's there's no foundation no matter what I do here. But if I bring it up to this height, you can see that's where the terrain's coming back in. Oh, and something we haven't even mentioned yet that I actually kind of wanted to mention earlier. Um, one of our big prime motivating factors for, um, well, not motivating factor, but like one of our, one of the design pillars that we had here yep. was non-destructive terrain. So, or non-destructive terrain editing. Yep. So basically what we have is we have the sculpting mode where you can go in and sculpt your lot and make your train look exactly the way you want. You can add your little mountain, like have a nice, your train set up, however. And then you can go and drop your, your rooms on there and you don't have to worry about the terrain anymore. It'll just yep. conform to whatever your terrain you sculpted is. So if you decide that you want to have a room just like slightly on the side, like halfway in between that section there, you can just drop it there. And, and so it is. Yep. Um, your will is the game's demand. <laughs> um, and then also, like as you can see here, when I, when I make this train go away, it's not gone forever. It's still, the game knows you sculpted that. It's still in a, sec a separate layer and it's like nice and saved away for you. Mm -hmm. So if you decide you don't want to zoom after all, um, your original hill is still there. So. Yeah, so basically. Non-destructive. Yeah, we didn't want to have the, like if the player made a mistake drawing a block, we mm -hmm. didn't want you to have to re-sculpt the terrain. Right, and we also don't want you to have to um, go in and sculpt the terrain down to make sure that the block goes over it. It's just like, I want to have my train kind of look like this. I want to have my room kind of look like that. Yep. And then you can still sculpt over this. So if I decide like, well, and I actually, I already kind of showed that off before, but like if I, want, if I decide that I want to have a little bit more hill over here, that is way too strong. Um, I can just go in and bring it up and then it will automatically do something um, that I call terrain constraint. That'll yep. prevent the train from going over the base of the block because this is an above ground block. Um, but so, you can still move the train around it. Really quickly to go into a little bit more on train constraints and show mm -hmm. off that. Um, let's go ahead and build a basement. Let's show yeah. let's show what how basements function with terrain. Yeah. So basements are still a thing, and we had a, a big question: is like, what does basement mean now that you have terrain manipulation? And the ultimate guideline is: if it's a basement, it's below ground, and if it's not a basement, it's above ground. So. In keeping with that Sorry. theory. Really quick. So I see a lot of questions. Uh, I just want to answer this really quick because I see a lot of the same questions. Uh, people are asking, can I build a block into a hill? Uh, currently, we're not supporting that. Uh, so it, this is sort of why we have these terrain constraints. Mm -hmm. uh, I know people are asking for building blocks into hills. The thing is, it becomes a very advanced user flow and becomes mm -hmm. difficult to control where blocks are placed. So again, these are things that we ultimately want to work towards, but currently are not supporting. Right. So well, I just want to also, answer that. There's also technical reasons why they can't. So it's, not, it's not just. Sure. Yeah. But we won't go into those. Uh, I just wanted to clear that up so you guys had your question mm -hmm. answered. So back to basements. Right. Well, and that's not to say it's kind of like split level blocks. And it's not to say it's impossible, but we didn't do it. Um, We're good. Yeah. Yeah. OK. So basements. Um, I can make one. So and what, so I do. what happens? <laughs> So basically, when you when you take your basement tool, it's going to make one underneath the train at your cursor elevation. Um, so if you place one at train elevation, it's just not going to look a whole lot like anything because that's what basements generally look like. Um, and these also have the same split level logic that we support elsewhere. So I have two basement rooms now that are two different heights. Yep. Um, but also, um, for one, I can now select the basement through the train. And that's just something that while we're working on it, um, because basements now do this, I guess I'm kind of jumping around yeah. a little bit. Also, really <laughs> quick, I, I see another question that people keep asking is the pawn tool. Mm. Uh, I just wanted to address it. So we've decided to focus on the usability of train manipulation and ensuring that it's very accessible to players. So we devoted a lot of time to multi-level block clusters um, and sort of a split level style of housing as opposed to diverting resources towards pawn tools. Mm -hmm. Again, this is something we're looking at and we definitely want to add it in the future, but currently we're not supporting the pawn tool. Mm -hmm. uh, again, just want to clear that up. Um, go ahead. Yeah, so I kind of jumped ahead of myself a little bit. Going back to the idea of terrain constraints. Um, because basements are always underground, if I, make, if I take this basement and extend it out into this gap here, it basically will automatically raise the terrain for you. It'll keep the basement under the ground. Um, but this constraint is only a maximum constraint. So if I bring this basement down below where the train was, then it doesn't touch a train because it doesn't need to. So the idea is that 
in order to try to allow you to manipulate your, your room or your, your lot without destroying your terrain, we have the idea of like the architecture knows where it has like certain requirements. Like an above ground block has a terrain must always be below the floor. A basement block has a requirement that the terrain must always be above the top. Yep. And then we have a few additional requirements where this is actually something you can do right now in, in a shift game. You can remove the top of a basement block and look into it. Um, this one has a requirement where the top of the train must always match the top of the block. And that's just because since there's a cutout there, the train actually has to go into it. Basically, think of terrain as your your sort of gap between above ground and below ground. Mm -hmm. Anything below is going to pull terrain up if you raise it up. Mm -hmm. Anything above is going to push it down. Right. Um, so you you sort of it's sort of a piece of clay that you can mold between. Right. And now another thing that we were thinking is because we now have this ability to um, like so going back a little bit, I was talking about the difference between basement and non basement is the fact that basement is below terrain and non basement is above terrain. I thought it'd be nice to be able to build the same structure you had before, the nice four-story structure that you had before above ground, it'd be nice to be able to do that below ground too. And so as far as that's concerned, we now have two more basement levels. Um, so before there were only no, two. No, three. We had three basements, we added one we had, extra one. We had two before, we added two. Did we? Cool. We added two. <laughs> Regardless, total number of basements. There, there are now four. There are four basements. In fact, basement there, there might be five. Let me check really fast. No. 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 All right. Uh, there's no, yeah, there's no <laughs> there's four, four basement levels. Yeah. Um, so one thing Greg wanted to show off here is yeah. now when you grab this block cluster of basements, do you mm -hmm. have to delete your... Yeah, that's conflicting. And delete, that one. probably delete the other one, maybe? I think we're good. Let's, okay. Let's give it a shot. Yeah. So Greg's going to pull this stair-steppy basement. Yeah. So all of these blocks, even if it's not on level negative one, it still adds a uh, terrain constraint. So because this block needs to be underground, that block needs to be underground, you'll see that this, the train goes to the lowest point that it can above your block and then stops. Um, and then it's, it's not just rooms that have these constraints, but we'll go over that a little bit later. Yep. So what's next on the list? Okay, so we talked about basements. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about how pools function with terrain. Right. Um, so in keeping with the concept of... Um, so let's draw... I guess we can draw a pool across two, two foundation heights just yeah. to start off. So these, what, function similar to... These function similarly to a above ground block, but in reverse. So in this case, the terrain can only go up to the maximum height of the top of the pool. So if I move the pool down, then the terrain snaps down to it. But as you can see, just like we had in previously, um, there can be part of the tool, part of the pool that has a foundation where the foundation connects to the top of the pool. Yep. And these foundations that we've been showing off, by the way, are just the standard foundations that we've already had in base games. So you can use any of these foundation patterns that come with all of our different packs. Yeah, it's actually kind of nice. Uh, one, a little bit of development. We, when we first thought about the idea of expanding the height of foundation, we were super worried about our foundation textures. We we're like, oh no, these things are going to repeat like crazy. They're going to look really bad. Um, but they actually handle the high terrains very, the high foundations extremely well. So mm -hmm. you can build these towering brick walls and stuff out of foundation. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and lower this pool again. Oh yeah, Greg also uh, accidentally showed off some of a, a new uh, foundation pattern from Get Famous, but oh. we'll cover that in a whole nother stream. Don't worry. In any case. <laughs> yeah, there, there's, there you can look at some, it. Enjoy. There might be some other stuff. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Uh, so now let's, what, oh, what right, about right, fountains? So also fountains, yes. So fountains, um, primarily pools, short pools mostly, um, they have a constraint that, once again, it's kind of like an open top block where it always has to, the train has to snap to that height. So foundations or fountains don't get foundations. Um, and like, so this kind of thing, like when I do this, like this isn't actually intended to be something that you do in your build that, that looks good. You should really like merge, the yeah, merge, merge this with like a flatten. So like the idea is that you would do something like, um, and it has some uneven ground where you have your fountain and then like some yeah. lumpiness around it. Like, um, the idea is not to make this look good. This is just part of the, the technical. No, I role. mean, yeah, yeah. It, it's sort of so fountains essentially function like basements, yeah. open block top basements, and pools will function like normal uh, above ground blocks. Right. Now speaking of pools, um, since you can do this, one thing I just wanted to point out oh, really fast. Hold on. We're going to stairs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's let's set the stage. Oh, okay, okay. So, so now that we've covered blocks. 
I, I sort of have a list of all the things because, again, we've added mm -hmm. way too much stuff. Right? No, we've added way the right amount of <laughs> yes, stuff. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, so now we're going to go into stairs and how stairs function with terrain and multi-level block. Mm -hmm. So, Greg, start us off. Right. So one thing I just wanted to point out really fast is because you can do this with your pool, you should keep in mind that this is not ratable. There's no way for your sim to get into that. Um, where it was before, if it was actually aligned with the train, they could get into this side, but they can't just climb up there. So if you want them to be able to route into there, you do need to place a stair. Um, and as far as stairs are concerned, there are a lot of things All right. you can do. So we're gonna, go, we're gonna go through our list here yeah, just yeah, to make yeah, sure yeah. We, we don't uh, miss anything. Yeah. So, so you can do, all right, sorry. We have terrain, like, terrain, terrain to terrain yeah. stairs. So Greg, tell us about those. Well, I mean, there's not a whole lot to tell you about them except for the fact that they work. And also they well, have- there is, I mean, yeah. they, we have to talk about stair landings and the bottoms of stairs right, and how right, they right. function. Right, so if you place a stair, so the most important thing here is that you can do it. You can have a stair that goes where the bottom is on terrain and the top is on a different part of terrain. Yep. Um, when you're placing the stairs, it's just gonna look for the next possible bottom um, flat surface that it can connect to. Yep. Um, now for terrain to train stairs, they also have the constraints I was talking about. And that is that the top of the stair, these four vertices have to be flat. Um, and at the bottom, it's actually either four or six, depending on if this has a number of steps that's divisible by four. You don't need to worry about that most that's of the time. real technical. Right, 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 right. <laughs> but the important thing is that it has constraints at the top and the bottom where it has to be flat. Um, and this is and important then, because if you manipulate, if you want to show them, oh, I so might be jumping ahead. You can do but, this, actually. Yeah, so go ahead and just accentuate the fact that how this works. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and grab your terrain manipulation tool. Right. Um, and this is one of Greg's favorite things to yeah. do. Yeah, well, actually, my favorite part is the fact that the middle also has a constraint where you can't bring the terrain above the stair. So you can do something like this, where you just quickly sculpt this, and now you have a stair that's embedded in terrain. Um, yeah, that's that's really cool. Especially with the slatted stairs, it really shows the terrain behind it. Mm -hmm. I think it's cool. I really like that. Um, so you can have train to train stairs. You can also do stairs can now cross multiple levels. So, so again, so before we jump into this, there's uh, more. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. uh, just so, so you guys understand sort of how a little bit of the behind the scenes tech works. Mm -hmm. um, Sims can never actually, so if Greg, grab, grab that level oh, three block really quick. We're talking about routing? Yeah, yeah. Grab the level three block. This one? Yeah, and go ahead and move it to the base floor on top of terrain. But then it's not gonna be level three so, anymore. So this block is technically level three. No, now it's level zero. So, oh, that's right. Build a, do, do, do you- Do you want me to make it yeah, level three? You do it your way. All or right. level two is fine. Just build a block on top of that. Yeah, I got this. Greg's got it. I got this. Delete, now grab. So this block exists on level two. However, you level can- Level one. Level one. It's not it's one above zero. Sure. Whatever. <laughs> level two if you're in Europe. So the important thing about this is Sims will not actually be able to, if you place a door, mm -hmm. grab a door really quick. Or if I just do this. Oh yeah, don't, don't grab a door. You cannot so route in there. Sims will not actually be able to route into this yeah. block. So in because order to get them to route to this block, we have to create a portal, which is a stair. Stairs will allow Sims to route between different levels. The stair is a subset of portals, but we, we, we. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, so if you thanks really, Steve. <laughs> hashtag thanks Steve. If you want, if you want your Sim to actually route into this, you'll need to place a stair. Right. So now let's talk about multi-level stairs. Right. Uh, let, so, let loose. <laughs> so stairs. The basic philosophy is you pick where the top of the stair is, and the stair is going to keep going until it finds the bottom. And it doesn't really matter what level it's on. It doesn't really matter a whole lot. As long as it's a ratable place where you can put stairs, that stair goes there. So I can just make a nice big tower here and put a stair. And now I have a stair. And the best thing about having stairs is that they exist. Yes. <laughs> so now this <laughs> stair is going from zero to level three, right? Uh, zero, one, one two, three, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah and you, right. can also, you can also have stairs where the bottom is on a higher level than the top. So I can do something like, actually, do I already have a block? No, I don't. Let's go ahead and raise a little bit of terrain right over here. No, that's right. My strength you, you is can, never where I want it to be. You can inverse and go down. Yeah. Up, up, down. Up, down. Yes. You really like these stairs. You're using these I, ones a lot. I love these stairs. <laughs> like, as, as soon as I start making a lot like this, where there's like a lot of steep gaps, the first thing I want to do is just cover it with stairs. Yeah. Like, like if, in fact, when I was doing this, I was like, I don't want to put a stair right there. I just need it. <laughs> so while I was sending it's out unstarable. Well, while we were making this, uh, yeah. I was sending out builds to the team of like what terrain manipulation can do, 
and Greg was sending out emails to the entire team. Look at all these stair things. <laughs> Look at all these stairs. And oh, the best thing is um, Steve, the guy who was working on stairs like a few years ago before not me. This Steve. No, not this Steve. Our, our Steve. Steve House. Yeah. Actually. So he was pretty much made for the build team with a name like that. Um, but um, he saw that picture and he came. He had to like talk to me. He came over from uh, the Sims Mobile side and he's like, "I saw that picture of stairs." He said, <laughs> "He's like, I bet no one realizes all the amazing edge yeah. cases there." It's and, like, and our lead engineer, he's so scared of this. It's okay. <laughs> I think stair. Yeah, Greg. Greg has an obsession with stairs. So. Yeah. So by the way, if when this when this ships, if there are lots of bugs with stairs, please forgive me. It is my personal <laughs> no. responsibility. We're good. Um, but they're so awesome. They're so good. Yeah. So. <laughs> so, uh, so now we basically showed you how all these stairs work, mm -hmm. how all the functionality works for this. Um, what I'm gonna do is, if you look at Greg's lot, it's not very pretty. You kind of just How went a little. You, you, you kind of went a little right. crazy. You know what? I'm gonna give this to you, <laughs> and you show me some some pretty stuff. Okay. So, uh, Greg was showing you all the functionality and mm -hmm. basically made this hodgepodge of various things. It's beautiful. I'm gonna go in. So while we were developing this, I was taking some time to actually build some lots to to demonstrate this functionality. So here is one I call glass heights. We're thank, gonna go thank ahead you, Holly. And place this. Holly says it's beautiful. It is beautiful. Yeah, it it's is beautiful, beautiful <laughs> in its own special way. Yeah. Uh, so here's a lot that I built. Um, and one of the things that I wanted to show about this was the stairs that are not actually stairs. Mm. So I used a technique with... Oh, we didn't even cover terrain tiles. That's, what we're, yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. where we're at. We're, yeah. we're here. We're now, we're now here. So I used a technique that uh, Greg was sort of alluding to. You can actually grab, place a terrain tile here and drag. Mm. And it'll essentially function like a block. They mm -hmm. have constraints, right? Right. So if I release, it'll create this little elevated terrain and it snaps to it. Mm -hmm. So I used that technique here and I placed a bunch of terrain tiles. And yes, my sim can actually route up this. Um, I go ahead and I went ahead and placed some lights in there. And nice I was using, house. yeah, I was using our fancy glass roofs. Um, Always on that too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we go, we, I added a little pool here with some, uh, some little vegetation mm -hmm. and landscaping. When I was doing, when I was making these houses, I didn't mm. realize how much work it is to mm. add landscaping and furnish homes. Because yeah. I like building houses. And I'm that, not a big fan of furnishing. Yeah, the first time you try to furnish a 64 by 64 lot is when you start to appreciate the beauty of the 20 by 30 lots. Yes. <laughs> like back back in base game when we were trying to get a zero bug bounce, where there was some time where we were waiting for bugs to come in, I tried to furnish an entire building. Yeah. It took me three days. It's, it's a lot of work. Oh yeah, and then I have my little guest house over mm -hmm. here. Here, let's go ahead and just pan into this. I went with like a little blue and white sort of mm -hmm. color palette. Look how empty this is. This is so <laughs> empty. I tried my best, guys. It's beautiful. I'm, I'm sorry. But this is like the little bachelor pad that you can have. Yeah, you can criticize my work, but you can't criticize your own. It's beautiful. Uh, okay. <laughs> Love yourself. All right. Let's go ahead and move on to another lot. Mm. Uh, show off some different stuff here. So Parkside Chalet. Let's go ahead and drop this in and furnish. Okay, so uh, on on the mm -hmm. Maxis Monthly, Nick and I. Oh yeah, I, I love the I I the one thing I did on this lot was I took the time to light the one it. thing. Didn't yeah. you do? Oh, you didn't do the whole thing? No, I built the whole thing. But the one thing I like really proud took time oh. to do and I'm proud of was I like lit the whole mm. thing at night. So I was pretty happy with that. Mm. Uh, one thing I alluded to on Maxis Monthly was I, I built a garage. No cars are not coming. Cars are not confirmed. Uh, it's basically a thing. I know browsing the shipped gallery. Hashtag cars next a, week. A lot of players, a lot of players do this. Uh, so they actually take the toy cars, they scale them up, and they sort of build their fantasy of you have a rich, lavish house. These are the cars they own. Cars are absolutely not confirmed. This is just something no I I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, but the reason why I did it was to show off multi-level block. So this allows you to create your base house up here. You can also create like a little guest house down low or, you know, pseudo garage thing. Mm. Um, and this is really what the multi-level block cluster work was designed to allow you to do. It's different houses at different heights. Not not one house where like all the heights are different. You can try to do that if you like. You can do whatever magical stuff. Yeah. But this is the primary reason why we did that. Yeah, this allows you a ton of flexibility. Again, <clears throat> my simple mind went to, oh, I can make a guest house or garage. Uh -huh. I can't wait to see what you guys do with this because right. I'm sure it'll be way crazier than what I can come up with. But again, my barren, empty house. <laughs> it's just, I thought I did a good job with the, okay. wait, wait. <laughs> I thought I did a good job with the living room a little bit. I probably could have put some pictures up. Mm -hmm. And then you gave up. 
Yeah, and the other thing I do all the time that I'm noticing is all my bathrooms are the same. Like, I literally do the same thing for all my bathrooms. So I got my little kitchen here. You guys don't care about this. <laughs> Next house. Uh, let's go so, ahead. All right, hold on. You're like, okay, Greg, we can't talk about all the train inflation stuff, but let me point out my kitchen. <laughs> like, no, like, that's for later. But look at this kitchen. It's so beautiful. Oh, my God. It's, it's, a kitchen. <laughs> it's, a kitchen. it's a kitchen. Okay, so next house, let's do Palm Peak. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this in. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, there's going to be some EP7 uh, Get Famous stuff in here. Don't look as, at it. As my, huh. as my lot thumbnail Over your eyes to. from the EP7 stuff. So this is a house. Ooh. Actually, let's, mm -hmm. yeah, perfect. So this is a house I wanted to build to sort of demonstrate a little bit of the fence functionality. So Greg, uh, <laughs> we can go a little technical here. How technical so, do you want to go? So we have two types of fences we in do. our game. We have a yard fence Which and is... then the standard block fence. Yep. And the big difference is that a yard fence is, as a fence you see right here, it conforms to the shape of the terrain. So um, as you draw it, basically whatever the height of the terrain is, that's where the fence is going to go. Actually, here, also... I, can, I can demonstrate this really quick. So if you hmm. grab this, and any old fence, and I pull this, mm -hmm. the fence will actually conform to yeah. the terrain and sort of smoothly run along with it. Right, so that's the yard fence, and the big rule there is you you can't, um, so, they don't have a base elevation. But for example, if I start on top of a block, yeah, so and I pull out. Right, so the rule for yard fence is, if your first point when you're starting to drag the fence is on terrain, it's a yard fence, otherwise it's a regular block fence. And the block fence has a solid height um, or fixed height. You can change the, the base up and down, um, and the yard fence does not. Also, the yard fence, the, the block fence, when you click on it, you get the additional arrows on the side to add yep. a width. You can grab and pull. To make a full room. Well, not oh, just those, right. yeah, but yeah. the ones in the middle. Boop. Yeah, so if you click on the yard fence, you'll see that all the stuff in the middle is gone. So you don't yep. get the base elevation gizmo, you don't get the width gizmos, you only get the endpoint drag gizmos. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so, again, You also can't upload this to the gallery. Why? Um, it's just one of the rules. I figured as long as you're talking about all the technical stuff. You can't what? You can't upload a yard fence to the gallery as an individual room. Oh, yes. But you yeah. can, as, as a but you can upload a fence to the gallery as an individual sure. room. Sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show off with this lot was the ability to build stairs connecting multiple levels. So looking at this house, this is actually level two here, or level three, right? This is the top of two. That's, that's two. Because so, zero, zero is the bottom, and then one is in between the two, yep. and then two is the top. So we're actually connecting these here, and I went ahead and built this little pool. That actually looks like two to two to me. Okay, well, <laughs> maybe maybe I miscounted. The important thing is you can do this. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter what level they are, really. You don't need to know. Exactly. Yeah. It, it'll all support it. And then yeah. I built... It just works. I built a little Hashtag floating... Thanks, Steve. Yeah. I built a little floating... <laughs> oh, you don't uh, like it? <laughs> floating deck with uh, terrain manipulated up to it, sort of to give the illusion that this terrain is holding up this this expanded area. What do you mean illusion? It definitely is. Yes. If you actually remove that terrain right now, the whole thing will just come down. No. We have physics. The, the entire building will actually just roll. Nope. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's this lot. Uh, okay. Cool. Let's uh, go ahead and jump into one last one. This one I am the most proud about. I probably spent the most time on this one furnishing. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, the first time you loaded it since yeah. we didn't have no, no, we, a lot of time. Great. So Whew. this is... Why? I hear an echo. Steve, I hear an echo. It's me. Oh, it's you. It's the headphones. headphones. You're fine. Okay. So this is what I'm calling the Windenburg Temple. Mm. Um, so I'm sort of showing off here. Uh, again, I use move objects, and I use uh, size up and size down. Uh, rocks and I built a sad little waterfall here, which is very sad. You guys can do much better, I'm sure. Um, so you guys have may, may have seen this. I think Scott put this in one of his puzzles. Uh, but basically, you can walk up these stairs. And I went ahead and put a little pool in here. Scott put these in one of his puzzles? What are you talking about? Scott do, does puzzle on the side. I can explain Oh, that. oh I see what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah, that one. So, so um, uh, I know a lot of people are asking about the water tool and the pond tool. But I, this is something I know players actually have the ability to do in our game. Mm -hmm. So I sort of demonstrated it a little bit here. Yeah. These are actually pools. Um, I use pools so the sim can actually swim in them. And then I went ahead and built this little bridge expanding out to this little uh, outcropping rock cluster here. Um, yes, I used a lot of Jungle Adventure stuff in this uh, in this build. I love these little lily pads. Um, but yeah, so here here is sort of what you can do with these terrain tools. Uh, again, there's this like little bridge ex um, expanding across these two blocks, 
we sort of created a, a little overpass that the Sims can walk through. I, I took the time to furnish this a little bit. I did. <laughs> you took the time to furnish all of them to this degree. You have Slightly. like four <laughs> objects per room. <laughs> Slightly. I'm just concerned about performance. That's right, all I right, care That's about. actually very yeah. important. Um, but yeah, and again, this, this block is existing separate from these guys. But yeah. That's uh, that's some of the builds I've I've gone ahead and built. So speaking of performance, there's there's a few lots. Sometimes I get a bug where it's like if you download this off from the gallery, like the game was really slow. You look at it and you cover the entire wall with one by one non-instance objects. No. Like please don't do that. <laughs> it's okay. No, no, I just uh, all right. The Pick player, instance objects. Yeah, <laughs> players players will do what they want. It's all, all right, good. Right. No, I mean it's not a bad thing, but your your game goes slower the more objects you have. Okay, so one thing I do want to cover, I want to take some time to let it all sink in. Mm -hmm. I know we threw a million things at you. Uh, we're we, super excited we about it. We just want to like, start moving the train a little bit, like waves, like while, a, they, while they think about it. Like a little zen garden. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, let's go ahead and throw some questions. I'll, I'll let you guys throw questions out. Please don't go crazy on the chat. Um, we'll do our best to answer as much as we can and maybe demonstrate some stuff that you guys want to see. Um, so I'll hand this back over to Greg because... So Craig gonna, is more gonna, technical with building. Are you going to look for questions while I... Oh, yeah. So that was another question I saw come up. Uh, painting terrain. We currently are not supporting painting terrain. Again, these are well, we, things... Well, we support painting terrain, but not the, the steep yeah, slope Yeah, so texture. go ahead and sculpt terrain yeah. really quick, just to show it really, really fast. Yeah, so there's this... Oh, we didn't mention, actually, yeah. We didn't mention that this texture... Did we mention? This what? texture is per world. Yeah. Um, so the art team went in and made different textures that look good on steep slopes um, and kind of match the surroundings. Um, so there's you get some rock in, in this world we're using here. But if you go into uh, Windenburg, I think it's Windenburg. No, not Windenburg. We're in Windenburg. What's Oasis uh, Springs. Oasis Springs. Yeah. Oasis Springs has more of like a it's, sandy texture. So we wanted to ensure mm -hmm. that the rock textures that you were underlying on the terrain sort of match the environment they mm -hmm. were housed in. Um, but the player won't be able to actually paint the terrain. Um, we we didn't do this for various reasons. Um, I know again, these all are, of them these, very good. These are all things only the best reasons. These are all things we're curious about and we want to keep looking into. But we want to provide you these tools as soon as possible, so we can't do everything mm. all at once. Otherwise, you'll never get any tools. Yeah. It'll <laughs> we just keep it from you. This forever. is literally the very most we can do like right now. Like there are so many bugs. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's so many possibilities. But yeah, yeah. Um, so let's see, what, what other questions? I'm gonna do my best, chat's going quick. Mm. I'll try to grab were, some stuff. Were there changes to basements? So like people wanted to know windows or doors, can you walk out of a basement? No, so, glass roof? so Bas the, basements yeah. are still gonna function as normal. Um, you can't walk out of them, you can't place doors or windows on the outsides of basements. The concept is they're still underground. Um, so there's nowhere to walk out to. Yes. You can't just like walk in the dirt. Like yeah. we don't have dirt walkers yet. No, no, dirt, no dirt walkers. Uh, let's see. Can Sims walk on terrain? Is it walkable? Sims can, in fact, walk on yes. terrain. <laughs> I'm uh, happy to report. Can you add Actually, windows to foundations? No, you cannot add windows or doors to foundations. Did we point out the routability hint? Uh, no, maybe not. So we can go into depth about this yeah. a little bit. Yeah, so I mean, ultimately, as you would expect, if a terrain is really st steep, Sims can't route up that. It's so, like your Sim can't route over this mountain, yeah. and you wouldn't want them to anyway, because immersion breaking and whatnot, and you, you want a good way for them to die, so. Um, you want to <laughs> they, can't, they can't jump off mountains, it's not a thing. <laughs> That's not what I was referring to. <laughs> you want to be able to like make a little pit for them. But in any case, like the a good rule of thumb for whether or not a sim can route is, if you can see these lines, then the sim probably can't route. Um, and we have this mood tool if you want to try to make it, uh, and once again. There you go. Like right around there is routable. And then the second um, reference point is if you can see this dirt here, then it's probably not writable. If you want the technical term, 46 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> 40, well, 46 well, more, degrees, more exactly. specifically, you can see that each of these tiles is one meter, and each of these white lines is one meter. So one of these, uh, or two of these lines over a distance of one of these tiles. And that actually is, is not as hard to use as you might think. Um, there was a lot of math that went into this. I mean, to make things it's, consistent. It's it's programming. There's yeah. some, we call it 3D math. It's a lot of math. All right, but look. So you can actually do this. Like I can count. All right, I can go up to our 46 or 46 degrees, and this is actually 45 degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a flat part right here. Um, so that's one tile wide, and another flat part right down here, and my sim 
can route here. Yeah. Um, and if I do one little notch higher, they cannot route. Um, but like for most people, look at the lines. If you see lines, then you yeah. probably can't route, or you probably can't route yet. If you don't see lines, you probably can. And if it doesn't look like they can route, then use this thing and then like make it smoother, and then you're happy. Yeah. Um, so I used I used that technique when I was building that lot with the stairs that are not stairs, like sort of the terrain stairs. Mm -hmm. uh, I just, basically I placed those blocks. I placed the the tiles. I think it was a meter apart, or uh, I think it was two tiles apart, mm. and then I just sculpted terrain in between. And because of the terrain constraints, it actually made it super easy to do. Mm -hmm. That was really nice. So you can just do this kind of thing. Snow. Oh, snow. snow. Yes. It works. Snow works. Uh, that was actually one of the first it's things snowing. we, we cool. ran into. Uh, funny thing, little behind the scenes development. <laughs> uh, that was good. While we started working on this back when we were sort of wrapping up seasons, mm -hmm. um, and I was very much still trying to polish and perfect seasons. Mm -hmm. um, so I sort of kept flipping back and forth, playing with snow. And right. then I pulled, I, my, I pulled my terrain up and I was like, oh, great. This actually looks awesome. Mm -hmm. And the, the snow will actually conform to the terrain. It works perfectly. Um, as oh, is that the story you're going to... Oh, go ahead. What? Go ahead. No, you go ahead. no, I'm good. Go ahead. Do you have a story? Well, the story I was going to tell is like, I, I think it might have been you. Maybe it was Jeff. Like, came by and was like, well, let's work with snow tools. I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. Pulled up the tweaker, like, turn on uh, snow. Yeah. And it's like, completely empty. No snow whatsoever. Yeah. I'm like, it'll work. Yeah. <laughs> we, can, <laughs> we, we can get it. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, it, it will work with snow. Yeah. <laughs> No, no avalanches. <laughs> but if the world doesn't have snow, then you don't get snow. Yes. We did not add snow to Mall World. No, no. Um, Steve, you make so many facial expressions. I'm not <laughs> used to this yet. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> and like, and I'm like, yeah. what does this mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And like, the, what, is, what does Good. that mean? Is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so actually, uh, plants. They won't, they're curious about plants. Mm. Um, so if we grab... So like you saw in the, the house, the glass uh, glass heights build I made, I was able to actually place plants on um, manipulated terrain. Right. So I kind of pointed out before, we grabbed the rocket ship and we put it down. We're like, look, this is only slightly imbalanced or slightly not flat, so you can't place anything. But there are actually two classes of objects. There are the objects that require flat space and the objects that don't. So something like a rug, as you'd expect, requires a flat space because if it's not flat, it's just going to float or clip to the terrain and look terrible. But plants, trees, that kind of thing, they don't require flat um, flat terrain. So you can place them on this kind of thing. Um, they will start to float in some situations because it's it's still, like, you know, we're not going to tilt the plant or anything. Yeah. Um, and it still does have a requirement. Like, if you try to put it on a really high thing, then it's not going to... Um, yeah, we give you some yeah. flexibility with this, but we're trying to avoid you making really broken-looking lots. Right, and there's always the move object yeah. sheet. So um, to start they with... Were, they were asking about that. Yeah, move, move objects. objects will allow you... Actually, we can demonstrate it. Go ahead and do move objects really quick. I can try. Let's try it. <laughs> I'm just worried it might delete them if I sculpt the train over it. Let's see. Move objects. Right, it's on. Not, yeah, I need an S. Yep. And then go ahead and grab that tree. No, no, no. Just, just place, try to place the tree oh, on, yeah. on a oh, yeah, That's going to work. I thought you were talking yeah. about sculpting no, tree no, no. under it. So there. You basically have... It allows you to place trees where you otherwise wouldn't. So I know our advanced builders... And it only works for trees. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> turn, turn, it works move, for everything. I'm just kidding. Turn uh, move objects off. Yeah. Just so we remember. Uh, but yeah, so it, again, gives you more flexibility there. Um, I know our advanced users are going to always, they always build with move objects. Mm -hmm. um, okay, anything, is, let's see, anything else? We have a couple minutes. Um, one thing time. One thing Greg really wanted to cover was some stuff related to um, more advanced tools. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go ahead and talk about that a little bit. Um, so we, we went into some of the hotkeys, building stairs across half walls. Um, mm. We'll probably do that at, towards the end. Um, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm already starting with the stair staff here. Great, of course. He's always <laughs> going. I love stairs so much. They're great. And they're also terrible. Pillars. Um, Pillars. Pillar of the community. Um, so you can hold on to control now yeah. to drop a stair down. So we should show the dangling. To really the, the dangle. Yeah. Oh, you want to do the full dangle? Yeah, you got it. Mean, <laughs> just drag a block off your off your terrain. Well, first I just wanted to show like this is something I like to do where the entrance to the house is actually on top. It's nice. Um, but yeah, so if I have a block up here, I'll, like so. Oh, gotta be a little too low. Yeah, I know. Okay. I was making another one. All right. This, uh, th when Greg came to me, he was like, hey, I want to do this thing. I was like, is it easy? He's like, yeah. Well, which time? Like the first time? <laughs> like literally the, the first, first time. time or the sixth time? The first time he came to me, he yeah. was like, I want to do this. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's genius. Why didn't mm -hmm. we do this? 
So now if you want to have us there connected you, you just, to... You, like, you didn't even talk about it. You just did it. They can't hey, see your hey hands. Mr. Terrain Manipulation. Like, do you remember? Do you not remember like the, the Max's Monthly just like two yeah. weeks ago? So, <laughs> oh, just doing it without talking about yeah. it. How dare I? So, so it, actually, when you when you hover the block over, we got. Let's talk through it a little bit. All right. Okay. So grab, delete that stair, or sure, grab another. Another one. stair. Another one. Yeah. Another one. So flip. You gotta flip it though. Another one. Re release control. Nope. You're, you're jumping. Uh, all right. Well, how do you want me? To, I'm yeah. just gonna. Like, uh, okay. Good. So <laughs> grab a stair. Yeah. So notice how the stair right now is actually searching upwards. Yeah. Um, as soon as Greg clicks control. Yeah. The stair will search down. And if I let go of control, it doesn't anymore. Yes. So plus control, and then go ahead and place your stair. Yeah. So Greg, jump quickly through it, but I just wanted to step you through like yeah. this. This functionality allows you to, because I remember while I was building, there's a lot of times where I'm just like, ah, oh, the gap of the stair is not in the right spot. Mm -hmm. I want it to shift a little bit. It needs to be here because my upstairs objects are sort of in the way. Mm -hmm. So it allows you to get the gap of the stair right where you want it. Hit control, stair goes down, and then you can place it. So again, we we never a miscommunication. Yeah. While while doing terrain manipulation. Uh, Greg also took the time to make a couple of quality of life improvements, just like selecting basements through terrain, mm -hmm. which is super helpful. So this is something I love doing. Oh, so Greg's going to show you uh, building stairs that span half walls, right? Is that what, what we're about to do? Well, for now, I'm just going to do this. Oh, okay. Woo! Oh, that's awesome. Actually, yeah, you can do that. But I'm also going to do the stairs spanning half wall thing. Um, so, I can cut out a nice little section of the block, and then drop the stair down. So like I was saying, the general principle behind this is that, in fact, I'm going to do the half wall first, yeah. is that stairs start at the top, and they just keep going until they find something. Um, right yeah, yeah. yeah. I got this. Oh, leaks. Um, leaks, so many leaks. <laughs> Don't talk about the leaks. Perfect. <laughs> There you go. Um, so now I can do this. And also, I can do this. Bam. I mean, this isn't the interesting part. I just like the way it looks. Oh, yeah. So now, now you basically have an inset stair yeah. within a block. So little subtle things that I think our builders will, our advanced builders will enjoy. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of stuff you can do with this. So yeah. take the time to play around with it. Yep. There's some, there's some really cool stuff here. Um, Anything? Oh, yes. Um, we're going to talk about since, some of the legacy. Hold on. Since, since we're in build uh, and Greg did <coughs> click half walls, we'll quickly brush over <laughs> leaks, this. Leaks. Uh, go ahead and grab the, go back to half walls. No leaks. Uh, we'll get into way more of this later. But yes, uh, there are more half wall options. There's so there's, there's a uh, um, slightly uh, larger and slightly more large. You're fine. I was, real, I was like, wait, didn't this crash the game? But that was no, no, another no. build. Yeah, nope. So that's we're not we're not clicking this, but we're good. <laughs> Should I click but yeah, it? there, there are Should I no, click it? no, nope. Go back, please go back. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yes, there are there are more help walls, and they're awesome. Okay, uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. does it rain in the blocks with stairs in them? Uh, yes. So if if you don't close the block off, it's still considered an outdoor block. Uh, can you put <coughs> gates on yard fences? Yep. Um, but that has to be on a flat section. Yeah. So going. So, so I can actually just go ahead and sculpt. So while Greg's sculpting, gates sort of function similar to how objects function. They <laughs> need to be placed on flat terrain. So if he pulls the a fence across that block, or the sorry block uh, across the terrain there, that flat part can absolutely have a gate. Boop. So as long as it's flat, you can attach a gate to it. Uh, Greg, build a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my lord. Uh, so yeah, just throw out some stuff. Greg can play around a little bit. We are over at this point, but we want to take some time to maybe dive in a little bit deeper until I know Steve has a meeting, I have a meeting, and Kate has a meeting. And I have like he has of to, bugs. He has to fix a lot more of this <laughs> <Yes>. stuff. <laughs> so yeah, we're... Like all the things I want to show. Again, we're still pretty early. We haven't released yet. Um, there are more bugs with this, so you, if we may have... Work in progress. Yeah. Greg, Greg has to go back to his desk and polish this even more. Um, pillars don't extend up to... No, no. no. Pillar, pillars will not uh, dynamically extend. Let's see, I'm trying to catch as many questions as I can. How close can Sims get to the edge of the train? A, Sims can route to the very edge of the train. They will not be able to jump off, obviously. Um, a questions about stairs, but we're not changing... Like, we're not including new stairs stuff. 
No. There's no, going to no. be a new stair, maybe. No, no, there's no new stair types. So, like, no spiral staircases, none of that. Um, again, we, we want to do a lot of things. We can only do so much because we have to eventually give you guys tools that yeah. we've completed and polished. We actually want to <laughs> give it to you at some point. Yeah. It's... Otherwise, we would just, if we gave you everything at once, you would never get it. Because yeah. we have to make sure it all works. And then we go out of business. Um, oh, we didn't even talk about roofs. Oh, yeah. Uh, so Greg will show you quickly how roofs function with terrains. Damn, they do. Yeah. Um, so the general idea is roofs, um, the way that they've been designed is that when you place a roof, the roof is supposed to be kind of non-intrusive. So if I wanted to like decorate the side of my house with this little roof here, um, the part of the roof that is inside is going to get cut out. So if I scroll down, you can see like this part of the roof. And this is all legacy, this isn't anything yep. new. But um, in keeping with this philosophy, roofs also do not affect terrain. So I can just go ahead, like if I want to make the side of this, and this is actually, um, when people were asking before about like the Hobbit house type of thing, this is something that Romeo did with one of his test builds where he kind of placed some roofs in interesting conf configurations where they're going through the terrain to kind of make it look like that. So for, uh, if you're up to the challenge, you can try to do something like this to try to make a roof um, yeah. that like connects the house to the terrain. Um, and so, of course you can always, you can place doors on roofs and treat them as your own little house. Yeah. So. so you can, there are, again, Greg and I tried to stick high level for a lot of people, but there are absolutely a ton of advanced uh, user flows that I know you'll find out. Uh, so like, for example, a lot of you were talking about building terrain in, or building walls into terrain. You can't, well, we're not supporting it, but you can absolutely do it with roofs. So Greg is sort of building a pseudo hobbit hole thing right here, <laughs> um, using a roof only. So again, it's a little restrictive, but again, we, we wanted to give you some way to, to right. tell those stories. Uh, Kate, they say bless you. I yeah. <laughs> Get you in tight. Um, yeah, one of the things that I did see, I wanted to I'm call really attention to. This is going to work. No. Uh, <laughs> one of the things I wanted to call attention to was when we released glass roofs, uh, I didn't even think about it, but the community immediately started creating biodomes. Mm. And I thought that was the coolest you thing You didn't ever. think about it? That no, was one of the first things I did. I did not think about yeah, biodomes. I made a little and stage. Publicly, like, people were kind of create, finding ways to create. Now I think that they're going to have a lot more options, too. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be really cool. What is happening here, Greg? Uh, it's a biodome. Biodome. <laughs> Yay! It's a cube. Uh, do you want to show them some of the advanced roof tools that yeah. I didn't even know yeah. existed? So this is a <laughs> shout out, hashtag Dan Christensen, I guess. Um, added in some extra roof tools, actually, I think like five months ago. And I think we did a quick blog post on it and then never mentioned it again. <laughs> um, but if you do, if you click on a roof and pull, then do- Pull that roof away so you can really accentuate. When you say pull it away, you mean just like-, like Put, put a roof in? in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, there you go. Bam. And make it not glass so you can, again, mm, fair enough. show off. Yeah, remember, they're not in the room. Mm -hmm. All they can see is this. Right, right. So we got to make sure we show off everything. Right, right. I got it. All right, so if you select a room, a roof, and then hit Shift and C, you get some extra gizmos here. And these gizmos allow you flander control over um, the curvature of your roof. So before, you, like normally you only get the one, so you can change the, um, the curvature of the one part of the roof. But with this, you can change, like you can make the top of the roof um, rounded and the bottom more steep or do the opposite. Um, in fact, I'm gonna, yeah, you can do whatever the heck that yeah. is. And then the one thing I didn't know existed was- You didn't know that existed. What do you mean the one well, thing? Well, no, the separate- the <laughs> Another se thing. The separate ones. Yeah. Um, so you can also, ah, uh, maybe this roof is too big now. Go ahead and make that smaller. You can actually change your eave length per side of the eave. So if you hold on the shift while you're grabbing these things, like by default, this will change your eave length. And actually there's an air ball down here you can use to make your house yeah. do that. It's, it's, it flies away. <laughs> yeah. If you hold on the shift, then you can adjust one side. So let me just change this camera angle slightly. Hold on the shift. There you go. Right. Go down. There, there you go. go. Yeah, so I, I didn't realize that was there, that you can actually adjust separate sides of the eaves. And not just that, cool. but the, the other side as well. Well, not just that side, but also this thing, which may or may not also be called an eave. Yes. So you can pull those separately as well. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, again, now we're, we're sort of done explaining terrain. I will try to call things as I see them going in chat. But yeah, let let... 
Greg is just showing off yeah. a lot of the builds. More things. Now. So I shared Antonio actually a slightly earlier today. This is, I actually, a lot of the development team, you might not be aware of this, a lot of us actually go and, and look at social media, watch what you guys are saying. Um, we're very, like, we're very passionate people and we like to make sure that, like, we have our, our thumbs on things. So um, we love you guys. Hope you love us too. <laughs> um, but I like, I like to watch people build because, um, you know, I like to see what they're doing with the tools. And sometimes if I see someone has a specific frustration, I know that there is a way around it. It's frustrating for me that like, I can't just go and, and do that for them. But like, I guess as far as that's concerned, um, one of the things I really want to make sure everyone knows about is when you're placing an object, if you hold on the shift, you can place multiple of the same object. <laughs> like this surprise, this is actually something. Yeah. Yeah. So like, that's really important. Not really that advanced, but like, please use it. Um, another thing is, um, so this is the thing that I showed you. Yeah, that's the one, that's the one uh, Romeo I didn't know about before. Why? Yeah. Uh, yeah, if you hold on the shift, you can place multiple of those. Um, but also, so like by default, when you're moving objects around, it's going to um, align to the grid. But if you hold Alt, then it's not aligned to the grid at all. And this is the same thing for rotation. When you're rotating it, it snaps to you know, these angles. But if you hold on the Alt, it doesn't. But there's another hotkey that people might not know about, which is F5. And if you do F5, then you get... Actually, I already had it before. So this is your default um, grid snapping, where it snaps to each vertice and each half. Uh, vertex, but if you hit F5, then you get one level deeper granularity. This is something I also didn't know existed. Yeah. And this is something <laughs> where, like, when I first told Antonio about this, he's like, why would I do that? Like, you just hold Alt. <clears throat> this is actually useful because it allows you to still have some, <clears throat> so, like, it allows you to better align your objects to, like, your, your architecture, which has to be aligned to the vertices and other objects, while, um, so, like, it allows you to maintain that, that Stricter connection. <laughs> Someone says, "Slow down." They're trying to write all this stuff down. <laughs> I, yeah. I'm pretty sure on Google somewhere there's a, yeah. a list of like all these fancy uh, hotkeys and stuff. But again, yeah. I know people are like, "Oh, guys, we had this since base game." Yeah. Yes, we this know is, we've yeah. had it since base so game. If you're, if We're you're just, just trying to show yeah. players what they can do because, yeah. like, I see a couple people showing. Oh, I didn't really know I can do yeah. this. So, if you're interested in the new stuff, like that part of the stream is over. Like from now on, actually, there's one thing I wanted to mention um, before you, before you leave. Yeah. And that is, um, while I was working on this tool, there's another really awesome thing that I made, which don't get too hyped about, but tune in to Maxis Monthly, November 6th, 11 a.m. Uh, Pacific time, um, to get see the next Maxis Monthly and other things that I may or may not have worked on. Yeah. Um, and I can't be here to show that off, but uh, I'll have to make sure that Romeo calls me out on yes. it. Yes, absolutely. Um, the, the next Maxis Monthly is going to show off one other thing. I'm very, I, I, I love it personally, yeah. um, but uh, I'm curious to see what you guys think. Yep. Um, but we will show that next time. Yeah, that's that's all I'm <laughs> going to say about it. Um, and another thing I wanted to point out, like so, Control F, quarter tile placement. You can do this; it's awesome. Please use it. And um, one last thing I wanted to point out is quarter tile rotation. Um, so last one. It. Yeah, last one. This is this is it. Greg, Greg's having too much fun. I am. I, this is something that I I actually I didn't know myself that you could do it um, until I got a bug on a community not doing it incorrectly. And in any case, it's awesome. So you can place down tiles normally. Um, turn off the grid. You can rotate. You can rotate them with your um, arrow keys, mm -hmm. um, as so. But you can also place quarter tiles with Control F, and you can rotate the quarter tiles. And the reason this is awesome is because if I rotate this tile here, um, in this placement here, so it's going to look better on some tiles than other ones. Like this one actually doesn't have the effect, and I don't think I have the time to go and yeah, find yeah. the actual one. But you can get some. Actually, here you go. It kind of shows it off. Yeah, so you can manipulate you can get some your effects. floor patterns. You can get some effects where, like, you see, like, there's, like, a little pathway here of the wooden grain. And this is something where, like, it's not designed to look that way, but since you can rotate the quarter tiles, you can get something where you have, like, some really advanced patterns. Um, so that's awesome. I'd love to see more people using that. I have not seen a single person use it except for the one bug where it turned <laughs> out to be unintentional. But yeah. I loved it so much. So I want to see more of that. Cool. Um, With that. Yeah. Uh, we are over time. I have to run to a meeting. Greg needs to get back to yeah. polishing <laughs> and fixing a lot of the train All bugs. All the stuff I wanted to show it and currently yeah. crashing, so I cannot show. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. We hope you enjoyed it a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to sign off now. Thank Bye. you. Bye.